Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Beautifully Aligned podcast, or welcome if you are new. I am your host, Lynn Ford, certified professional coach and founder of Beautifully Aligned and All Gussied Up, the blog and the YouTube channel. And this podcast is for the woman who wants to live her most beautifully aligned, purposeful, joyful life. Last week, I shared my beauty routine. So my daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly beauty routine. And I got so much great feedback. And this podcast and my brand really is all about all things beautiful from the inside out. And so today, I wanted to talk about external beauty specifically. And if you find yourself judging yourself or judging others, then I really invite you to go deeper, to go beyond the surface level, because this is more than just surface level and being materialistic, because external beauty and treating ourselves the way that we really should, and I hate to use the word should, but it really gifts ourself with the permission to represent beauty in the way that it makes us feel good to do so. Before we go any further, I just wanted to read you this super simple quote on beauty that I really liked, and it is, beauty is whatever gives joy. And this quote is by Edna St. Vincent Millay, and it was an old-fashioned way of saying, let people enjoy what they enjoy. And she was the first woman to win a Pulitzer Prize for poetry. So this story that I'm about to tell you really influenced today's episode. And last week, I went to get my nails done. So I get hard gel. By the way, if you get your nails done and you get acrylic or dip, I encourage you to try hard gel. It's similar, but it's better for your nails. It looks more natural. I love it. And I actually find that it lasts longer. So I went to the salon to get my fill and the person that I go to was sick. And they asked me if I wanted to see someone else who could do hard gel. And I was a little bit hesitant because I'm very, very specific about how my nails look. And it, it's it been a challenge, to be honest, to find someone who does them how I like them. I'm particular about the shape and all of that. So I went to get them done. He was sick and I saw somebody else. And I walked out so disappointed. I feel like there's memes and TikToks about getting your nails done and being disappointed. And that was totally me last week. I will show them. You probably can't see them very well on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube, but I will describe what I like and then what I got. I'm sure you've seen those, what I asked for and then what I got. That's like the epitome of what happened. So now I'll be living with them for a couple of weeks until I go and get my nails done again. I could go and get them fixed essentially, but that would involve getting tips put on and I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to let them grow and then I will go back to my person. But this whole thing with my nails really got me thinking about how I express myself with my external beauty, with the physical aspects of what I do to make myself feel good on the inside and the outside. And nails are a total thing. And those of you who get your nails done, I'm sure you get it. So the whole thing with that story and with my nails is that having my nails done, as I was thinking about it and having this conversation, is that having my nails done, not only does it make my nails stronger and I don't have to worry about doing them myself every other day, which I was doing at one point and then they were chipping and it was a whole thing and a, a time suck as well, but they look beautiful and it's really about my feminine expression of how I feel on the inside and bringing that out. So I like the longer nails. It makes me feel more feminine, which is how I feel on the inside. 
And I really want to illuminate that the feminine expression inside of beauty, which is this huge elusive term, you know, beauty can mean so many things and it can mean different things to different people. But the feminine expression inside of beauty is so unlimited. And I really invite you to slow down and evaluate what your current expression of external beauty is. What does that look like for you? What are your choices about your nails, your hair, how you dress, your style, how you're dressing your body, and what is the conversation that you're having in your head about how you express yourself and your external beauty? I'm going to come at you with some questions in this episode later on to just maybe start thinking about or journaling if you want to. But one that's coming to mind is, is there something that maybe you've wanted to try, like a beauty thing, or maybe it's like a new trend, whatever, but you've been putting it off because you're scared or you're afraid of judgment. Maybe you're judging yourself for even being interested in it. I'm giving you permission right now to try it. If it's not harmful in any way to yourself or to others, give it a try. And the way in which you choose to express your beauty is your business and no one else's. And this is where values really come in to play here. We could do so many episodes on values, and I'm trying to think right now about how, like, what direction to take this in with values because we could go in so many different ways. But let's stay on the path of judgment and shoulds for a second. So if you find yourself judging yourself or judging others, start thinking about what your acquired values might be and why are you judging yourself? Why are you saying, oh, I should do X, Y, Z? And when we are judging and saying, I should, that can lead to stress and then it snowballs from there. So really trying to live in our core values and live in a way that feels true for us. So following your inner truth. So I invite you to really start thinking about what your core values are and your inner truth. And obviously, everybody is going to relate to this differently. And this values work is really what I want to encourage for a deeper level of conversation inside of you. And think about what is a representation of beauty right now for you in your life. What feels true for you to express outwardly as far as how you're feeling inside? Backing up a little bit to talk about judgment. So usually when we're in judgment, we're living in our acquired values versus our core values. So that's something to keep in mind too. If somebody is judging you on your appearance, they are probably not living to their core values and they are probably projecting onto you. And let me give an example. This is just random. I've seen it online. I've seen it with friends, family, the whole thing. So say Sally didn't like the wrinkles that were starting to form on her forehead. So she got Botox and she also wanted to give her lips a little plumping and make them look more hydrated, a little bit fuller. So she got lip filler. So she got Botox and filler. And say she posted a picture on Instagram and mentioned that she got Botox and filler and she's feeling so confident and so beautiful and shared maybe where she got it done. And then there's a slew of comments saying, you shouldn't have done that. You were so beautiful before. What did you do? You don't need Botox. You don't need filler. And people will project on us. It's just a fact. But really knowing inside of ourselves and having that really beautiful conversation that we get to have with ourselves as far as what our preferences are to enhance our beauty on the outside and live out what we're feeling on the inside to feel more beautiful. And that can change. I'll give another example with, say, you're getting some gray hairs and you want to cover the gray hair with 
hair color. And so you go to the salon and you get your grays covered. That's great. That's up to you. Someone could also say, oh, you should just let your grays come in. But on the flip side, say somebody chooses to let their grays grow out. They just want to embrace it. It's totally up to them and what makes them feel in alignment with their choices and their external beauty. But in that case, you could also go the route of people saying, oh, that's so commendable that you are growing out your grays. It looks so beautiful. Or on the flip side, they could come with judgment. So regardless of what you are doing or what you choose to do to make yourself feel more beautiful because it's really about you and your preferences and letting your inner beauty shine externally and showing the world how you take care of yourself, but feeling beautiful for you, it's only your business and no one else's. And it's really an intimate private conversation that we get to have with ourselves and really standing in that choice of freedom to change our mind, to try something new, like I mentioned. And the more we do that, the more comfortable that we can be in our own skin. Okay, another story time. So since I can remember as a little girl, I loved anything and everything feminine. We're talking pink, frilly, sparkly, all the shiny things from the time that I was very, very young. And I had an interest in makeup, very, very young. And I really leaned into that. So my style has always been very feminine, very pink. You can see my pink sign right here. Nothing has really changed. But there was a time I would say if I had to put like a time stamp on it, that it started in my late 20s because I was very easily influenced by other styles, like what was in style then. But I also I'm realizing lately as I think about this and I've been coached on this and I've been to therapy is that I had kind of a fear. I'm sorry if you can hear my daughter screaming. That's going to be a new line that I say in every episode. So I had a fear of visibility and of being judged. So I started to dress differently. An example of when I did this was a corporate job that I had where I was going into the office where 100% of the people in that office, it was a very small organization, had completely different style and I'm going to say values than I do. And so I didn't want this attention and I could kind of sense that this is my hypervigilance speaking and it was hypervigilance at that time. If I had worn something quote unquote loud or frilly or sparkly, not that I'd wear something like super sparkly and frilly to work, but I went to the kind of extreme where I was wearing lots of black, really boring clothes that just weren't me. And part of that was I felt like at that time, corporate clothes were not fun or interesting. But I also, I'm thinking about this now as I'm talking about it, I also really didn't want to be there. That job didn't align with my values. And so I also just didn't care. Oh my gosh, I'm saying that. That sounds bad, but I didn't care. So I didn't put a lot of thought and effort into how I was dressing, but I also didn't want judgment and I didn't want people saying, oh, wow, that's you know, a really frilly outfit. I just wanted to kind of fly under the radar and not be judged. I didn't want to deal with it. It was like, I don't have time to deal with your judgments and talking about my style, which isn't yours. Yes, we can all have different styles, but I'm just sharing this experience with you because it's a part of my story and maybe you can relate to this. Eventually, I got out of that job and I started dressing more to the core of who I am. And at my core, like I've said, I am a total girl's girl. I like makeup. I like nails, which we talked about. I like beautiful outfits that make me feel good about myself. 
So I mentioned core values and I talked about acquired values. And right now, like in the past couple of weeks, I have just started doing this work, like digging deeper into really niche values. And what I mean by that is going beyond my core values and thinking about what my beauty values are. For example, what my style values are. So I thought I would share some of my beauty values and invite you to think about what your beauty values may be. I have my beauty values right in front of me so that I can look and share with you. And they're really an extension, like I said, of my core values. And funny enough, beauty is one of my core values. They're not in any particular order, but the first one that I have written down is I will not buy something just because an influencer is selling it. So I don't know about you, but I follow lots of beauty and style influencers and I am big on research. Education is actually one of my core values. And so I choose to research really everything that I purchase. It's really important to me. So if I see something that an influencer is selling or talking about, I won't just flippantly buy it. I will do my research before I purchase something. The next one is I will only wear makeup colors that I love. We could go down a whole rabbit hole about color and I just might do an episode about color. I am actually going this week to get a color analysis done. It is so cool. If you haven't heard of it, I encourage you to look it up. I will be sharing that experience on Instagram stories and I'll be posting a YouTube video about it. So look out for that. But in regards to makeup, I will only wear colors that I love. For me personally, this is very personal. So please don't like take offense or think that you have to have these same values, but I'm just giving you examples. For me, I do not like red lipstick or like bright red blush on me. I just don't like it. It feels a little too harsh for me. So the colors that I love and that I kind of gravitate towards with my makeup are more cool toned. The next one is I will wear what makes me feel good on a given day. So we can change how we feel day to day, right? So maybe one day I want to wear really bright pink lipstick and a pink blush because that that's what makes me feel good. Maybe the next day I want to do something different with my makeup. I'm just sharing makeup specifically, but I will wear what makes me feel good on a given day. The last one that I have is I will practice beauty rituals that make me feel good and that are fun. So fun is another one of my core values, enjoyment and fun. And so really making the process of my rituals in regards to beauty is so important to me. So for me, that's many things. And you can go back and listen to last week's episode. So I like to make my rituals around beauty a whole thing, very enjoyable and fun. So for me at nighttime specifically, I will turn the lights off. I will turn my salt rock lamp on. So it's like spa vibes. I will do my skincare, put coconut oil on my body. It makes me feel just soft and feminine and it smells good. It's just so enjoyable. And that's one ritual, for example, that is enjoyable and it makes me feel good. Today, I want to leave you with a few questions to ask yourself to really get yourself thinking about how you want to express yourself with your external beauty. And the first question is, what is the expression of beauty that I am currently doing? And how is that making me feel right now? The next question is, how do you want to feel? And therefore, how can you express that feeling externally? The next question is, am I doing something because I feel like I am supposed to do it? 
And then last question, kind of on the flip side is, are you not doing something because you assume you're going to be judged? Maybe someone is going to think you're high maintenance or think you should be doing X, Y, Z instead. Think about those questions and really sit with them and answer them honestly. And like I said, this is an intimate, private conversation with ourselves. It is no one else's business how you choose to present yourself with your external beauty. One more thing before I go, and this is so exciting. I am creating a brand new group coaching program. This will be my very first group coaching program. I don't have a name for it yet. I am currently working on naming it and organizing all of the sessions. It will be a three-month group coaching program where we will dive into your values, which is what we kind of talked about and touched on in today's episode. So really diving into discovering what your core versus acquired values are and how to separate them, how to drop maybe your acquired values if you want to, how to integrate them if you want to, but also how to remember our purpose. So we will be diving deep into values. And with that is really finding, discovering, remembering, because it's within us, what our purpose is here. So whether that's in life, maybe you want to add more fun, more beauty to your life, maybe you're feeling stuck in career, whatever it is, really getting crystal clear on what your purpose is, finding your values, living to your core values, which means less stress, less feeling stuck, more confidence, all of the things, that is what this group coaching program will be. I'm going to keep it very intimate. I think probably 10 people or less. And so if you are interested in joining the wait list, because like I said, I have not even named this program yet. I am working on all the modules and the sessions that we will be going through. If you are interested, I will leave a link to just drop your email so you can get info on the group coaching program. If this sounds exciting and interesting to you, I will leave a link in the show notes or if you're watching on YouTube to sign up, get on the wait list. You're by no means signing up for the group coaching program. You're just getting on the list for the wait list to find out more about it. Like I said, I haven't even named it yet. So I should be sending something out announcing what it is in the next probably week or so, but get on that wait list. I will have a discount for you as well if you want to join and you came from the podcast. So drop your email. You can get all the things there. And with that, I will talk with you next week.